On today's episode of the Duck Zone 503 podcast, we preview the tight end position heading into spring ball 2023. I'm your host, Dominic Peterson, and this is the Doug's Zone 503 podcast where we talk all things Oregon football. Whether it is your first time viewing or you're a long time viewer of the podcast, I kindly ask that you guys hit that like and subscribe button down below. Really helps with the algorithm, but most importantly, guys, telling your friends and family about the podcast is what helps grow this podcast the most. Word of mouth, guys. Word of mouth. With any podcast anybody does, that's the way to help grow it the most. Really appreciate everybody who does subscribe down below and locks in with us on YouTube and also locking up, locking in with us on Instagram and Twitter at DougZone503, simple search. Quickest way to get the updates straight from us as they happen, go hit that follow button. All right, guys, never the doubt, I'm going to keep bringing you guys these spring preview episodes, and here's another one previewing the tight end position Spring game is April 29th, 1 p.m. kickoff. I will be there, man. Make sure you guys say what's up if you guys see me. So the Ducks have just three scholarship tight ends on the roster as of now. I expect that number to go up through via the transfer portal after spring ball is concluded. But never the doubt, entering spring, we just have three scholarship tight ends. After years of the group being limited to blocking in a run-heavy offense under Mario Cristobal, the tight ends were actually utilized this year. Yay! Especially with the tight ends we got. I mean, Maliki Matavau to Terrence Ferguson this past season. Those two guys, man, we needed to incorporate these guys in the offense. And I was screaming at the TV every time. I was like, man, why are we not using these tight ends? The tight ends were utilized more creatively, more effectively uh, by mixing in a balance of run and pass plays. Now, Mario Cristobal, as you know, he just liked to go run, 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 right? Man, finally we had some passing, and we've seen the tight ends get out, get some catches. So good thing for Oregon, good thing in recruiting for Oregon and trying to recruit some tight ends over here too. So departures, let's talk about the departures that happened over the offseason. Departure Maliki Matavau decided to move south and stay in the Pac-12 by transferring to UCLA and Chip Kelly over there. Cam McCormick reunited with Mario Cristobal by going across country to go play for Miami. Now, Cam McCormick, man, that was a sad one because he was almost here for a decade almost. <laughs> so seeing him, a longtime duck who played with a lot of other ducks, Leave the program, that was a tough one. But, man, you know, seeing him battle injuries and battle injuries was fun. Best of luck to Cam McCormick out there in Miami. Best of luck to Maliki Matavau, big-time player, really good player. Sucks to lose him as well to UCLA. Uh, each of those guys caught about 10 passes last year and were were, were about reli- were really reliable on, on the inline blocking scheme. Uh, but the And that's something the Ducks are going to have to replace here. Uh, the Ducks... Still have a lot of good pass catchers and Terrence Ferguson and stuff like that. But they're going to need some some body bangers, some guys that can move guys off the line. Uh, they're going to have to find somebody for sure. Uh, but let's start out talking some positives. Let's go ahead and talk who we got on the roster. There's about three scholarship tight ends we'll talk about. Let's start with Terrence Ferguson. Now, obviously, the number one tight end guy had a big-time year last year. Leads the way for the tight ends this year. Caught five touchdowns, which was second to only Troy Franklin on the team. Troy Franklin had nine. Terrence Ferguson had five, so that was good. Ferguson had 32 catches in 2022, ranked fourth on the team. So really, really production coming from the tight end room. That's what you want to see on a balanced offense. He caught at least one pass in 16 straight games. So that's big. He's on a roll there. He's very close to cracking the top 10 all-time for catches by an Oregon tight end. Cusping tight end all time for catches. That's big. After joining the Ducks at six foot five, two hundred thirty pounds in twenty twenty one, he's packed on twenty five pounds and has the best blend of blocking and catching at the position. All around big time, great tight end. I think Terrence Ferguson has the makings of being an NFL tight end after this year. Packing on muscle, developing, able to block, able to catch, able to route run. This guy's the total package, no doubt. He will be a big time threat in the for the Ducks offense this season. Now, that's good and all, but where the Ducks excelled is they had two of those guys, right? Maliki Montevall was another guy that could block, pass, run, catch. Really good guy. Sucks to see him go. And you're kind of left with guy, uh, guys that are really experienced, and then you, got, you have a guy, another guy that's, that doesn't have any experience at all. The guy that does have experience is Patrick Herbert, okay? Justin Herbert's uh, younger brother. 
Patrick Herbert played in all 13 games last season, although didn't exactly light up the stat sheet. He had six catches, 95 yards, and one touchdown. And I think all of us as Duck fans really want to see Patrick Herbert go off, right? We want to see this dude just make a a, a statement and, and try to join the league with his brother, right? We want him to be able to make enough plays to go do that. And we just didn't see it last year. I mean, he got the opportunities, right? And we just haven't seen it from him. And I'm not saying Herbert can't do it, but I think we've seen enough of him to know what he's got. And I don't think he's a starting caliber tight end that you need, unless he makes some big jump that I just don't see him. By by all means, I hope he does. I just don't think he has what it takes. Now, given he should have a big role in this Will Stein offense as a fifth-year junior and the most experienced tight end on the roster, he definitely has an advantage against the younger tight end on the on the roster here in Kenyon Sadiq. Kenyon Sadiq is an early enrollee freshman that uh that will that will look to have a big role for Oregon um after the Ducks big 2023 class. I mean, he comes in and that number eight top 10 recruiting class that Dan Lang was able to put together this last class. And this is, this is a big time, uh, big time passing pass catching tight end uh, during his high school career at skyline as, as a senior in Idaho. He's much smaller and, and, you know, much, much a smaller tight end than Ferguson and Herbert at six foot three, 220 pounds. The ducks will need him to hit the weight room and put on some weight for sure. Uh, Sadiq will also need to get adjusted just to the college game in general, especially that tight end position is never easy going against bigger, stronger, faster guys than you trying to, you know, acclimate yourself from the high school game. It's always tough. And, you know, specifically the physicality and the speed that comes with blocking at the point of attack is what he's going to have to learn at the college level, because at the college level, it's just different, right? He does bring a lot of athleticism and that big playability in the room that I just don't don't think we have. I mean, if this guy catches the ball and he has a lane, he's gone. I mean, this is a big time playmaking tight end. He just needs to add add to his frame and get some experience at, at blocking in the college level against guys that are going to be stronger and faster and just more physically dominant than him. He's going to have to learn how to how to bulk up and and how to use technique to to counter that, right? So three solid, very good tight ends. Terrence Ferguson's a star, has the makings to be a star in an NFL draft pick this year if he does everything right. I just think we're just pretty thin at tight end, though. I mean, if Ferguson was to go down, you're relying on a guy that hasn't really given you much production, and you, you've given him enough play time to see what he can do. And then you have a freshman that just relying on a freshman in general is just, just tough to do, right? So pretty thin at tight end, and I, I would prefer at least four scholarship players in the room. Uh, I do expect the Ducks to dip into the transfer portal and add to the add, add to the tight end room once it opens up back in May. So in May, after uh, the spring season's pretty much over, the, the coaches are allowed to dip back into that transfer portal. Only thing is, though, guys, not much names sticking out to me out there in the transfer portal. Not much. We could do a whole other video on names that to look at when that when time comes. But yeah, that goes ahead and previews the tight end position for the Ducks. I'm going to continue rolling out my spring preview for you guys for each position group. Um, go ahead and check out the channel already if you want to check out more positions just like I did here for the Ducks as we head towards the spring game on April 29th, 1 p.m. I'll be there, guys. Make sure you say what's up to me. Really appreciate everyone once again for tuning into these videos. I'm your host, Dominic Peterson. This is the Duck Zone 503 Podcast where we talk all things Oregon football. Got Guys, if you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button down below. It really helps with the algorithm growing the podcast, but that's all good in the hood. But let me tell you guys, word of mouth, telling your friends and family, your mom, your dad, your all your family members, all your friends who love Oregon football, tell them about the podcast right here on YouTube. Get them to subscribe, and let's all be part of that Doug Zone family. Really appreciate you guys. Also, Instagram and Twitter, go ahead and follow me right there at Doug Zone 503 for the quickest on-the-spot updates about Oregon football. Really appreciate you guys. See you in the next pod. Keep watching these spring previews as they come out. Go Ducks.